Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of D3 Live. So this week we'll be talking e-readers, more specifically the Amazon Kindle 3rd generation, the Barnes & Noble Nook, as well as the Apple iPad. So, of course, Amazon just released their new Kindle, so I'm going to go ahead and start with it. Now, obviously the Kindle is really the one that started out e-readers, and it has consistently stayed one of the best, if not the best, around. Um, with the new one, it is a bit thinner. Uh, it is also quite a bit cheaper at only $139. Um, that's pretty impressive as, you know, just a couple years ago when the Kindle came out, it was over $400. So, that's pretty cool. Um, so basically right now if you want to go ahead and get a Kindle, you can pre-order them and they will be uh, released in a few weeks here. Um, you basically, for $139, you will get the standard Kindle, which has a 6 inch e-ink display. Uh, and it will be $139 and you will get Wi-Fi. Um, now if you want to go ahead and bump it up, you can go ahead and get it with AT&T 3G. Um, that's not a bad option and of course the 3G is free so you can go ahead and download books from anywhere. Um, personally though, I mean, it, unless you're really, you know, out and about traveling and everything, I think I would probably recommend you sticking with the $139 version. Um, you know, it's quite a bit cheaper, and to be honest, you know, like I said, guys, I mean, when you're getting into, you know, $140, that is almost just like, you know, you just walk by and go, hey, I just buy that. It's not, it's not a big deal. It's not something, you know, you really have to, you know, get worried about or whatever, like maybe the iPad is. So, guys, I think the Kindle is going to remain a really solid choice, and for the price, it's going to be really solid. Now, of course, let's go ahead and move on to the Barnes & Noble Nook. So there are also two versions of this. One is $150 with Wi-Fi, and then one is $200 with Wi-Fi as well as 3G. Um, again, I'm not a huge fan of 3G and e-readers. Um, I do like the idea of, you know, of course it's free, so, you know, you're not going to have to pay a lot for, for to use the 3G service. But then again, I don't know, I mean, Wi-Fi should be good enough to load pretty much anything. I mean, unless you like to, you know, I just can't see, you know, really using an e-reader out in the middle of nowhere to download books. I mean, it's not a big deal to, you know, if you're buying one or two books a month, hopefully you're going to be in Wi-Fi in your house or something. So I don't think that's a really big deal and worth spending the extra money. That said, though, guys, the Nook is definitely a, you know a pretty decent step up from the Kindle as far as features. But whether it's, I'm not saying it's better exa exactly, but it does have a 3.5 inch color touchscreen on the bottom. Um, so I've used the Nook, and they are pretty cool. Um, the problem is though is that it does run Android, and usually I really like Android. It's a fantastic platform, but for an e-reader, it's just not that great. Um, so the main problem with Android running on the Nook is that it's pretty slow. Um, so, of course, an e-ink display, if you've never seen one before, um, they look really, really solid. But the main problem is that, you know, the refresh time takes a while. So, you know, you click on a next page, you know, to flip a page on a book, for example, and it does take a couple seconds to go ahead and flip. And that's kind of a problem. Um, but, of course, it's an e-ink display, you know, you kind of learn to expect that. What you don't expect, though, is on the LCD screen, it doesn't really, it's not really any better. It takes a while to scroll or anything like that. Um, so... While I like the Nook, and I do think it's really cool to go ahead and have, you know, a screen, as well as, you know, you can go ahead and look at one screen and look at the other. kind of gives you, uh, you know, a really kind of cool thing. I don't think the Nook is really that great. I think that for the price, it's probably not too bad. But I, if you're really sticking for a, just a standard e-reader, I'd probably stick with the Kindle. Now, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the wild card, which, of course, is the Apple iPad. So the iPad is much more expensive than these. Uh, starting at $500 and going all the way up to $830 with the uh, 64 gigabytes with Wi-Fi and 3G. I'm going to go ahead and just stick with the Wi-Fi model. That's just kind of what I think you know is the closest match. And if you can ignore the price difference, the iPad is a really, really big step up from just a standard e-reader. So, of course, the iPad does come, or you, rather you can go ahead and download it for free in the App Store with the iBooks application. Um, now, iBooks is, of course, going to be on the standard color touchscreen. And that has advantages as well as its disadvantages. So with a full color screen, you can obviously, you know, look at pictures. Um, it's going to look really nice. And you're not going to have any issues with frame rates or anything like that. You know, you just flip the page. It's going to just go just as smooth as you can imagine. The problem is, however, is in battery life. Whereas the Nook and the Kindle, you know, you're, they're rated for how many days or weeks they'll last on a charge. The iPad is only going to be about a few hours. Um, so even at 10 hours, that's pretty good, you know, considering a laptop. But against an e-reader, that's a pretty big knock. As far as, you know, the Kindle, you can just leave on. You can charge it, you know, like uh, every week, every two weeks or something like that. Um, that said, though, guys, the iPad does a lot more than just book reading. So, of course, you can get on the Internet with Safari. Um, you can go ahead and check your email. Um, really, you can do so much with the iPad that 
being an e-reader is only just one of the very, very many things it does. Um, but of course you would expect that considering that it is much, much more expensive. So really guys, it's kind of hard to say what you should get or what you should. Personally, if you're just wanting a standard e-reader, you know, you don't really worry about what all the, the extra stuff that the iPad does. Maybe you have like an iPhone or some other smartphone that you can do that. I'll probably go ahead and go with the Kindle. It's really solid. Um, the ne the la latest version of it is slimmed it down, is trimmed off a lot of the price, and it works even better. Um, now, that said, if you have a little bit more money and you're looking to, for a device that will do more than just read books, the iPad is probably going to be the way to go. You can go ahead and, of course, read books, but you can do so much more that it really does warrant the much more expensive price tag. Okay, so in the second segment of D3 Live, I'll be taking live questions from everyone. Um, I'm currently on Log TV, and we've got a lot of people in here, so I'm going to go ahead and take some questions. Okay, where do you get the Amazon Kindle from? Actually, that's a good question. Um, so, until up until recently, the only place you could get the Kindle was, well, from Amazon. However, they've recently go ahead and branched out. So if you go to many Target stores, you can go ahead and buy the Kindle there. Um, that said, though, probably the best bet is to go ahead and get it from Amazon. Um, a lot of times they'll have deals or, or, or special special incentives for you to get them there. Um, sometimes they'll give you, you know, like a free case or something. But go ahead. It's not that bad of an idea to go ahead and take a look at Target just because you can actually go ahead and get a hands-on of, of an actual Kindle because as great as, you know, a lot of devices are, if you actually can't, you know, you actually feel them and test them out before you buy, obviously it might be a bit of an issue. Um, what do you think? Do you really consider the iPad an ebook reader? Um, I don't, I consider the iPad to read ebooks along with dozens of other things it does. Um, like I said, I don't consider it to be a strict ebook reader, and I doubt many people buy it just to be, to be an ebook reader. However, it is something that it does do, and it is something that it does do really well. So, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, one of that gray area, but I do definitely expect that, you know, you can do ebooks on it, and it does work pretty well, so, um... Uh, is the iPad really an e-reader or an entertainment device? Um, same, pretty much same answer. The iPad does so much. It's really hard. You really just can't say it does one thing or whatever. I mean, yeah, of course you could say it's just for web browsing. But guess what? It does a million other things. I mean, you could say it's just for apps. But it's got a lot of other things than that. So it's really hard to just say the iPad does one thing. And really, I like the idea that the iPad fills a lot of different niches at one time. I mean, you know, you could almost use it as like a netbook. You can use it as an e-reader. You can use it as, you know, like a portable DVD player. Obviously, it doesn't play DVDs, but you can watch movies on it. Um, you know, you can use it as a giant iPod. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with the iPad. Um, would you personally read it on a screen rather than a book? Actually, that's a good question. Um, I've, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty big reader. I like, I have a whole bit, a bunch of books and everything. Um, I've never really had a whole lot of experience. I've, I've never actually owned an e-reader. I've never really, you know, spent the time. I mean, I've read a couple of books on my iPod Touch just for the fun of it. But to be honest, I love the feel of a book. I love actually being able to hold it, put your bookmarks and everything. Um, I do like the idea of e-readers. I do like the fact that, you know, you can have hundreds of books and, you know, a really tiny device. I mean, there's no way you could actually do that in real life, you know, if you had the real paperback books. Um, but that said, though, I think that there's, you know, there's, you can, you can do either. Um, it's just kind of based on personal preference. Personally, I mean, if it's not a big deal, if I'm just in my house, whatever, I'd love to go ahead and just buy the book and just you know, read it around. But then again, if I'm going on a trip or for whatever reason, I, I don't have a lot of room for a lot of books, you know, buying a Kindle or an iPad or a Nook or whatever it is, that's just fine. Do um, you think an iPod Touch is a good device for reading books with iBooks? It's a good question. Um, I have, like I said, I've actually read a couple of books um, using the Classics application. You know, this was a few months ago before iOS 4 came out. I'm um, using the Classics application on the iPod Touch. Um, actually, it's not that bad. Um, of course, the iPod Touch has a pretty small screen, and this goes the same for the iPhone. It has a pretty small screen. However, it is usable. Um, Personally, if you do really want to read a book, um, I, I read, for example, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, um, and it was a you know a very long book. And with the small pages on the iPod, I believe it had over a thousand pages. Um, the iBooks is a really good application, as well as Classics and many others. And if you know if it's just something you want to do, I, I didn't really have any troubles with it. Um, you know, especially in a dark room, you can just turn the brightness down, and it works pretty well. Um, but if you're really going to be reading a lot of books, I don't really recommend an iPod or an iPhone. I mean, it's more for occasional reading than you know, actually reading, you know, huge books all the day, all, all day and everything. Um, which e-reader is considered the most durable? And which one, is there one with an unusually high return rate? Um, I don't know about the return rate. Um, 
As far as durability, I would probably tend to think that uh, Kindle, and you know, I don't have any, you know, this is just based off of what I think. Um, the Nook is probably pretty good as well, but I just think with two screens, that's just more stuff to break. And the iPad, while it's, you know, it's a great looking piece, and I'm sure if you put it in a case where it would be pretty well protected. Um, we've all seen a lot of drop tests where it doesn't take much, you know, iPod, an iPad to drop off, you know, a three foot table land and, you know, the screen might break. So I would just kind of, just based on my personal opinion, I would tend to think the Kindle, but as long as you're being careful, as long as you're not, you know, dropping it or, you know, as long as you keep it in the case, whatever, I think pretty much any e-reader or whatever should be okay. Um... I heard it was a Barnes and Noble Nook. Um, yeah, I, again, it's kind of hard to say uh, because I honestly don't know for sure about you know I've never I haven't really researched it, but just based off of you know what I've seen and what I've you know I've, I've had hands on and stuff, the Kindle does seem to be pretty solid. Um, is there a beta for uh, Safari Six? Um, no, there's not. Safari Five actually just came out about a month ago or so, um, so it probably will be at least another year or so until Safari 6, probably when the next version of OS 10 comes out. Um, netbooks or books or ebooks, uh, which one would you get if price wasn't an issue? Uh, if price wasn't an issue, I would probably, well, I'd probably get them all, but no, if I was just had to pick one, I'd probably pick the iPad. Um, now, the iPad is quite a bit bigger than the Kindle and the Nook, but like I said, like I've said before, there are so many things that the iPad can do um, it's a really solid thing, and I really think that, you know, a lot of people would be happy with an iPad. I mean, like I said, the battery life isn't anywhere near as good, and some people don't like reading the backlit screen. Some, might, some people just like, you know, to read a normal Kindle screen. Um, but I think the iPad, if you, you know, if money wasn't an option, if they, you know, somebody was going to give you one for free, I think probably go with the iPad. Um, the iPhone design, is there going to be an iPhone redesign later this year? Uh, probably not. Generally, the iPhone is just you know, redesigned once a year, and while the iPhone 4, we've heard a lot of the reception issues, I don't think Apple's going to, you know, redesign the antenna or anything like that. I think that they're going to give away free cases like they are doing right now, and that's pretty much going to be it. Anyway, guys, I'd like to thank you for watching this episode of D3 Live. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching.